Well, now that we're all six feet apart, <laughs> don't you all feel better that you're six feet apart? The last thing he said, work with the willing. When I saw this thing six years ago, I started calling people, and I called these two guys. The reason I called these two guys in the beginning is they are they are kind of famous, a little bit, like big time. So at my old company, they were very famous people. I mean, if you, if you could get them to come, people would follow. Well, they weren't listening. If you've ever seen If a Gate's Up, when I said that, I tried. But they looked at me, and then they started coaching against me. I'm telling you, they did. We were trying to get people from the other company. I heard, you know, Fred and Kevin are talking smack about you. No, I, I heard it, Fred. Don't, don't give me a, don't, hey, I'm looking back. They, they're saying, you know, this ain't going to work. They're, they're saying all the things, and they are influential, right? And they're from the valley right now. But, you know, it took somebody, right, a relationship to talk to them, to have them, right, see it, work with the willing. And when they were willing to look at it, they jumped in. And let me tell you, now there are two of our biggest ad advocates. Let's hear it for Kevin Kaufman and Fred Weaver. Come on, guys. Woo! Brothers. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. So the, the truth is, that's partially true. But Gene was wearing a mask when he said it, so it didn't work. OK, it wasn't that good of a joke. All right, Gene, in all fairness, though, yesterday, Curtis presented me. You guys ever seen those uh, that was easy buttons that they used to sell at Staples? Yeah. So Curtis presented me with a that was easy button, except the button said, hell no. Because the first time Curtis asked me to go to EXP with him, I responded, hell no. We're all a no at some point until we aren't. Absolutely. Everyone's a no until they're a yes. And if you guys have not heard this, they're all coming. Am I, am I right or am I right? They're, like, they're all coming. It's a matter of time. And will you stay in relationship with them long enough for you to benefit from that as well? All right. Well, this is kind of a occasion for me, I guess. I'm sorry if this doesn't connect with all of you, but this is the first time I've ever been on stage with Kevin Kaufman wearing shoes, so I just wanted to point that out real quick. Um, I think we can lighten the room it's up a little cool. bit. I don't know. There's been some great presentations, but are you, do you have matching shoes on with your EXP sponsor as well? Is that a thing now? He's, he's my grand sponsor, actually. Okay. Awesome. All right. Why don't you share real quick, um, was it th almost three years ago that we came to a Brent Gove event? Share a little bit about that. So, so to further emphasize Gene's point that we are not that quick um, or smart, the f we signed up June of 18, and we were excited about it. Like, we were stoked to be here. We knew we had found our new home. And we went to an event in Las Vegas that Mr. Gove was putting on. And something was said that day. I've never even told Brent this. Um, so, but I'm, for those of you who are thinking the same thing, I want you to hear this. He said something one day in a room almost this big, like, hey, maybe, maybe, maybe some of us need to work on not selling as much real estate this year and work on building our future. And where I was at mindset-wise, like, I cringed when I heard him that, when I heard him say that, because I'm like, dude, we just sold 500 houses. I'm ready to go sell 1,000. That's what I was thinking. And... But then I realized in the context of it, like, now listen, some people are in a spot where, yeah, you got to go sell more real estate next month. Most people in this room are not in that spot. And so we do need to find a place where we maybe don't sell as many. Like maybe we set aside some time to start building the future and not next month's paycheck or 90 days paycheck. So if you're feeling like that, especially, how many first timers to a Brent Gove event are in the room? Holy crap. Wow. Okay. So there's like a couple of you. So if you have that feeling at any point today or tomorrow, like, I don't really like that, let my mistake or my lesson, just like think on that for a minute because you guys have the opportunity of a lifetime. And a lot of people will say the opportunity, it's already gone, it's too late. This is like the top of the first inning. Like we are just starting. It is so early. I can't even emphasize that enough. Awesome. All right. Well, now that we're four minutes into our introduction, I got a goal for you. That was good. That's all right. 
here's my goal for you today uh, during the next 15, 16 minutes that Kevin and I have. I want you to either get inspired or get pissed off. I don't know about you guys, but I've sat in rooms like this, and especially if you're listening to guys like us, and we're pissing some of you off right now. How can the two of you wearing shorts and flip-flops? You know, flip-flops on this just doesn't work as well. Anyway, how can the two of you create those type of results? And, and I mean this seriously. I hope that over the next two days, you sit here and listen to some of the people up here, and specifically Kevin and I, and I hope you either get pissed off or you get inspired, and then go out and do something about it. And I'm just being real right now, okay? We can all pretend that we're gonna be inspired by everybody up here, but some of us are gonna get pissed off. And I think it's okay. Whether you get inspired or whether you get pissed off, I just hope you leave here tomorrow and you go do something about it. So I wanted to get that out. All right, should we start talking? Do we have a presentation? Yeah, one, one other thing I wanna add before we jump into the next couple of slides. So that same attitude of, ah, I cringed a little bit, but I know, I know Brent, like I've known him for, 12 years, like he's a great guy, I love him, but I'm like, that was like a little bit of a moment for me where I was like, I wasn't ready to hear that. And then for the next two years, I wasn't really ready to hear that. And we had, like, who's from KW? You guys, you guys have heard the model E to P? Yeah, we just decided to spend, we just camped out for two full years in entrepreneurial. Like, nah, we're good enough, we have relationships, we'll figure this out, and it'll grow, and it did, despite what we were doing. And then one day, instead of despite what we were doing, we just decided like maybe we should listen to what like Brent has been telling us, what Curtis has been telling us. Oh, you've had that, that laugh tells me you've had that moment in your life, whether business or not. And I will say since we decided to do and attack this the way we're going to attempt to share with you in the next 15 minutes, everything's changed. Would you say that any differently? Yeah, we just spent five minutes telling everybody in the room we're really, really slow and we don't take any uh, advice from successful like, people. Our so, slowness yeah. is established. Yes, it's fantastic. I feel so good about myself right now. I don't know about you guys. All right, uh, is Rick Jiha and Casey Council, are they in the room? I don't know if they, oh, hey guys, hi friends. Everyone look at them and say hi. Yeah. So if you guys don't subscribe to the Brent Gove YouTube channel, you're missing like a oh. treasure of gold that is in the Brent Gove YouTube channel. And a couple months ago, and I haven't even told you this, Casey or Rick, but a couple months ago, you guys did a little event and Casey defined what it means to be a recruiter. And this hit home with me at an incredibly deep level. And uh, she says a recruiter is someone that cares enough about another human being that they're willing to sit down and have a conversation about what's going on for that person, what's working in their life and their business, what's not working, what can be improved, what are their hopes and their dreams, and then positioning as the resource to help them get it. And she ended that, Chase, I don't know if you remember this, I don't know if it's something you say all the time, but you ended that little talk and you said, recruiting is not a dirty word. And I think that for me, despite the success we've had, sometimes I carry around this little thing in the back of my head that says, man, am I really doing what's right for somebody? Do I have the right intentions? You know, do I want to call myself a recruiter? What will people think if I say I'm a recruiter and not a real estate sales agent or a guy that runs a team? And you just completely freed me a few months ago, Casey. So I wanted to thank you for that. Seriously. you want to go on? All, All right. right, so we're going to present what, I'm just going to be honest, Brent, I feel like we rewrote this, but that's how deep like we've bought into this now. You ever done that with something where you just like start taking credit for it? A lot of you have, yeah, come on. I've okay. started taking every single Brent Gove quote and I put my name at the bottom of it, so you guys have to excuse me, I'm excited as hell. So, yeah. and yeah. he took them from yeah, the jeans. 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 To begin with, yes, yes, okay. So anyway, if you subscribe to the Brent Gove YouTube channel, you've probably seen this. Brent has a video called The Four Simple Steps. And like the conversation today already, the people that have been up here have kind of woven some of this in, but uh, just to break it down, we've simplified everything because again, we're not very smart. So The Four Simple Steps, Kevin, and we added the words to freedom just to make it sound like we wrote some of this. It just sounded better. And we just added a word, we're like, yeah, that's ours. Um, and that's what they do in writing, isn't it? Uh, all right, so four simple steps, guys. Seriously, write this down. 
if you're taking notes and you all have pet, pens and paper, do this. Number one, step number one of the four simple steps is make a big list. For those of you who are thinking, I don't know that many realtors, bull crap. Think about an agent that joins your team or your brokerage and they say, ah, oh, well, I don't know anybody. I don't have a sphere to call. What do you do? You, they, you still make them make a list. They still have to create a database. So step one is make a big list. Yeah, let just, we have some time, so I'm gonna dive a little deeper. Uh, write down the names of the people that were in your former office, the people that were in the association that you belong to, the people that you don't like in the real estate business, the people that you admire and don't know, right? The real estate agents that you're related to out of state, the people that you know in California, the agents that you know in Washington, et cetera. I, I would encourage you guys over the next two days, if anybody up here, can I say this? I probably shouldn't. If anybody up here bores you to death, including us right now, just stop listening to us and make your list. You want to talk about something you could do over the next two days that would benefit you in a big way? Tune out Kevin and Fred for the next 10 minutes and make a big list. Like seriously, because we'll write it down and then if you're like a lot of us, myself included, we go home without a big list and then we get busy and we never make the list. We started teaching a class recently to the people in our organization called The Four Simple Steps and we spend a half an hour and you have to write down names. Right? Because we all need that space and time. So anyway, there's no excuses over the next two days. There'll be Kevin and I up here for 10 more minutes. You can ignore us. Start your big list now. All right, now that you're talking, they're ignoring you. Go ahead. Step two, reach out. I know that sounds real profound, but like make contact. And, and I'll, like a caveat to this is some people will reach out to you for whatever reason, because you've built some relationships, or they've seen that you've made a move, or they see that you're enjoying what you're doing. But the point here is, we're gonna have some conversations with people. I know it's awkward. Most realtors don't like other people, Just, right? You guys are all social butterflies, except for like four of you and Fred. So reach out to I'll them. I'll be the back of the room later. And engage them. I'm not saying go absolutely, hey, wanna join EXP? I'm not saying that, this is not that class. These are the four simple steps. Step one, make a big list. Step two, reach out to them, make contact with the people on that list. Yeah, I would actually argue, like many of us, when we build our sphere, our database, right, of potential buyers and sellers, we rate it, right? A lot of us have lists like that have A, B, and C on them. I would say after you make your big list, you should rate it. The A's on your list are people that you probably have a deep enough relationship with that you could reach out and actually say, hey, I really care about you and your business. Like, would you be open-minded enough to learn a little bit more about eXp Realty? Would you be open to spending 20 or 30 minutes and understanding the model? Those are the A's on your list, right? The B's are people that you probably know pretty well, but you may need to build a little bit more relationship. You may need to bring some more value to that relationship before you go right in with eXp. And then you've got some C's on your list, people that if you just call and say, hey, do you want to know about eXp? You create that aura that sometimes exists over our company of people that just spew eXp on everybody. And it's okay, because some of us will come back around and win those people over with relationship. But what we all could do is the C's on our list, instead of kind of throwing up on them, maybe just build some more relationship, bring some more value to the conversation, warm them up a little bit. Yeah, especially too, we've heard about the, the follow-up, which we'll, we'll go into a little bit more as well. Like, uh, and value, one more, value, value, value. I'm sorry, one more thing. If you're like Gene and you reach out, make sure you have both decision makers on the, on the call, okay? That was Gene's mistake. Whatever. Anyway, I'm, I'm playing right. with you, Gene. Step three, guys. This is important, and I didn't get this until December of 2020. You do not send them a freaking video. Do you understand that? Like, do not send a video. Do not email a video. Do not tell them to Google it. You do not. You set an appointment to watch the video. But not you to don't present the video to watch the video. But you don't tell them you're going to watch a video because that's weird. Now you don't have to make it weird. Like you don't have to make it awkward. It's not like, hey, uh, Gene, I want to watch a video together. Never say that. Trust me. Like, guaranteed they're going to say no or just cancel. Right? But if Gene's open-minded enough about his business to sit down with you and look at the model, you just left out explain.com, right? So we're going to make an appointment. We're going to sit down together, hopefully in person. If not, we're going to do it over Zoom. And as awkward as you think that sounds, it's much better than sending an email and then asking them 27 times if they finally watched it because they didn't, 
Okay, so you set the appointment to watch the model explained.com with them. Like it's, it's really that simple. Brent is extremely gifted at presenting this. Let him do the heavy lifting. How many times did I start texting you and James in like late December and early January like, thanks dude, you guys just did another listing appointment for me today. Because I sat down and I watched the video with them. I didn't send them. That is like the biggest game changer when it comes to conveying this message to them. And it's awkward, can we just say that? Like it's really awkward to press play on a video the first time you do it, but you will get more comfortable with it. And here's what you'll realize is that you're sending a message to the person you're talking to that recruiting is hard if you're the one that's doing all the presenting. If you press play on Brent's video at themodelexplained.com, you just subconsciously told that person they too can recruit to eXp as long as their mouse or their click pad on their computer works and they can press the play button. Like, do you guys get that? Like, it's actually a really big deal. When you're trying to reproduce the wheel, you're trying to recreate it, you're trying to start all this from scratch, Kevin and I have a whole website devoted to videos of us explaining this. It's and our really results bad. for two years were what they were. They're not as good as the results we've created more recently by following this model. Curtis used to always say to it, and again, it took us two years, two and a half years, because we're not that quick. He's like, if it doesn't duplicate, it doesn't matter. And you cannot duplicate you explaining the model a million times. Like you just can't duplicate that. But anybody can press play. Uh, gentleman by the name of Adam, who's here with us today, uh, who's been with the company for about a year, watched the video with somebody this week, first time. The guy really had never looked at eXp. Adam's an, an amazing salesperson, probably one of the top two or three in this room. He pressed play. And at the end of it, the guy goes, I could do that. And Adam was like, what? He's like, I could press play. I could absolutely recruit to this company because I can press play on a button. Like he got that without Adam even have to, because he modeled the behavior. So that's the other thing is you're setting that person up for success in the future. And if you think it's weird to take people to a, a, a website, Brent was kind enough to put a download button on the website too. So pro tip, just download the video to your computer. Then it doesn't seem like it lives on the internet. They don't know the difference. And pull it up off of your computer and just press play that way. Feels a little less weird. Just telling you, it worked for me anyway. All right, step four, three-way call or Zoom. Now, honestly, there's, I think everybody that's been up here has said this today, so I don't know that we need to go super deep, but again, I wanna go back to Casey and Rick. They did an amazing event a couple months ago, and Casey broke down what I believe, based on my research, there may be somebody out there that teaches it better, but based on my research, Casey taught the three-way call better than anybody I've ever heard. Ever. It was amazing. It's fantastic. It's so fantastic that I literally sometimes, I don't save the link, but I literally just go into Safari on my phone a lot of times because people ask me for it. And I type in Gove KC EXP and it like pulls up right at the top, right? Like you could literally go find it right now. If you don't know where it is, just type in Brent Gove KC three-way call. You will find a masterpiece of how to properly do a three-way call. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like, it, it breaks it down so simple that even Fred can do it. So absolutely take Casey's advice on how to run that three-way call. And then... That was good, by the way. You're welcome. You, you had that one coming. And then, Brent, you might remember about two months ago, we called you and we're like, dude, we are crushing the four simple steps. And dude, it's still going slow. And he's like, I know. You know what the fifth one is? Events, get to events and get your people to events. Like that's the bonus here. You gotta go through one through four. You'll do three-way calls and by the way, some people are gonna be like, yeah, I'm in. And then the other 97% of people are gonna be like, well, I got questions or I'm not sure. And then it's gonna take another Zoom and another Zoom. And trust me, that's all okay. But if you wanna condense that into a short period of time, it's come to these events. Especially now, guys, I feel like we have a very special moment in history over probably the next nine to 12 months because we've all been cooped up for the last year where people just, I mean, look, like they were threatening you guys of like, you better not have too many people in this room. Like people want to be around people and I, like more so than ever. I think you have an extra special opportunity moment in history over the next nine to 12 months, even more so to get someone to an event where they will make decisions. People make big decisions at big events. 
That's a Brent Gove original quote. I think I took this slide out, and so we have a minute left, so I'm just gonna leave you with this. Go find the Casey video and study the three-way call. I consider trying to condense it and teach it up here, but we'll do it a disservice. You owe yourself 30 minutes to study that nature and the science behind how to do that call and take the notes away from it and perfect that. Because people in our organization that are buying into this, and many of you are in the room right now, you know the difference this has made by following this, this process. Yep. So all I can say is we're not very smart, we're kind of slow, but if you can learn anything from us today, it's follow a process and a model that others before you have already done, and you will make this whole recruiting to EXP and your wildest dreams come true in a much bigger and faster way. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you.